For more than a thousand years, the ancient Silk Road transported spices and fine cloth across Central Asia. Nowadays, it's no longer camels carrying goods between China and the West, but containers. This is Aktau, a Kazakh port on the Caspian Sea. Today, it's a regional hub, shipping steel and grain to Iran and oil to Azerbaijan. China's President Xi Jinping has made building a new Silk Road his signature foreign policy. If he succeeds, this remote port will become an important hub for world trade. The boat pulling in behind me is the Croatian-built cargo ship, the Balaken. It's one of only a few ships that currently ply the Trans-Caspian route to Azerbaijan. Now, it's going to be loaded up with containers that have just made their way across Kazakhstan by train, and we're going to join it on its journey to Baku. Europe's trade with China is worth $600 billion a year. The vast majority of it currently travels by sea. Land routes, such as the one we're taking through Kazakhstan and across the Caspian Sea to Azerbaijan, would be significantly quicker, making them attractive for high-value goods like computer parts and perishables like food. Last year we tried uh, to make first train, container train from China and then this train delivered the cargo within five days from China to Azerbaijan through Caspian Sea. It's five days but a normal way will you know, will take maybe 60 days. Already, a small but growing number of trains head from China to Europe through Kazakhstan and Russia. But Russian trade restrictions against the EU, Ukraine and Turkey have led to a demand for alternative routes. Behind me is Iran, and over there is Russia. The boat that we're sailing on now is threading the needle not just between the oil platforms around us, but also between those two great powers. As part of its new Silk Road strategy, China has promised hundreds of billions of dollars of investment. It has set up a dedicated fund and new multilateral lenders, the $100 billion Asia Infrastructure Investment Bank and the New Development Bank with other so-called BRICS countries. But the concept of the new Silk Road isn't just about railways and ports. Of course, at the basis of the Silk Road, uh, we have infrastructure. Uh, but the reality is much broader. When we think about what the Silk Road Economic Belt will do, it's, it's not just going to be a uh, one line between China and uh, Europe. And this will really connect the entire region much better. We're now pulling into the port of Alat, just outside Baku. The crossing was supposed to take 20 hours, but in fact we've been on this boat for just over two days. I, for one, am very pleased to see dry land. There are plenty of obstacles preventing the Trans-Caspian from really taking off as an alternative trade route, and not just storms like the one that delayed our journey. But things are changing. In April, the countries along the route set up a consortium to coordinate cost-cutting and reduce bureaucracy. And when trade between Turkey and Central Asia was disrupted by the spat between Moscow and Ankara, Azerbaijan's shipping company slashed tariffs to provide an alternative. Shipping company, port authorities, railway company, they are all integrated in order to provide uh, the best uh, tariff, flexible tariff, which can uh, accommodate the needs of the uh, let's say shippers, uh, as well as be quite flexible. Each country uh, would like to have uh, at least two uh, routes, so to have some alternatives. So therefore, we offer these alternatives. Azerbaijan and Kazakhstan, which have been hard hit by the oil price crash, see the new Silk Road as a chance to reshape their economies. We think that this strategy is going to be transformational, not only for Azerbaijan, but also for the entire region. It is going to bring closer the entire countries in the region. It is going to uh, generate a lot of trade, a lot of labor. It is going to tie the economies, continental economies, to land, or in particular to the landlocked countries of Azerbaijan being one of them. Hundreds of years ago, traders on the ancient Silk Road would meet and do business in caravanserais like this one in Baku's old town. Nowadays, it's a swanky restaurant, more likely to be frequented by executives striking deals to profit from a new Silk Road. Ports like Aktau and Alat are still a long way from being modern-day versions of Samarkand or Bukhara. But with China's backing, the Caspian region could once again be at the heart of world trade. Jack Farchi, Financial Times, Baku.